I'm in Spain where I've been riding the 2016 Yamaha MT-09 with traction control. It's an amazing package for the money. It makes that impression the moment you start riding it. And three years after its introduction, the MT-09 still seems to do it best. For 2016, it's been given traction control and a refinement of the engine mapping. Does that justify a press launch in Spain? If the reason was only to remind us how good it is, then yes, it, it probably does. Spend 7349 on this bike, the same as last year, and you'll realise before you've reached the exit of the dealer's car park that you've got a good motorcycle for the price. Three things make an immediate positive impression. First is the size. It's barely much bigger than an MT-07. Second is the riding position, which feels very natural with the bars close to your body. The third is the front tyre skipping at the first input of throttle, telling you there's no shortage of mid-range here. It's really strong from about 4,000 RPM in third, and it's got the balance of mid-range and top end that characterises triples, so there's a linear rush to the 11,000 RPM red line. Some people complained of a snatchy throttle response on the original version. With the new engine mapping, that's fixed. Even in the sportiest of three riding modes, it's aggressive, but not snatchy. The middle mode, standard, delivers the same peak figures of 115 horsepower and 64.5 pounds foot. So it allows you to go just as fast, but ask for a bigger wrist movement, less precision. Level two trims about four horsepower off the peak and offers the softest throttle response by some margin, useful for carrying a pillion. There's lots of power from the four-pot calipers on twin floating front discs. A non-ABS MT-09 is available for 6949, but only while stock glass. The ABS seems as good as any, and I'd have that one. It intervened once on an uneven patch of road surface, but got straight back to the business of stopping. The suspension is adjustable only for preload and rebound damping at both ends, but it's capable, it was taut, and well damped enough to keep the MT-09 unrattled by anything on the test ride, but soft enough for comfort throughout. I'd happily ride this bike all day, although the absence of wind protection would probably make hard work of long motorway rides, especially without the benefit of Spanish sunshine. The seat is low enough to let a rider of average height easily get both feet on the ground, and the electronics are pretty straightforward, with one button for changing riding mode and an up-down switch for choosing between traction controls level 1, 2 and off. You have to close the throttle to change riding modes, but because that button's on the right bar, you tend to do that anyway. Traction control level 1 intervenes later than level 2 and allows some spin in the rear Bridgestone Hypersport S20 tyre. You can switch between TC levels 1 and 2 on the move, but you have to stop to switch it off. The digital dash is small and there's quite a lot going on on it. Among other things, it can tell you the ambient air temperature, your current and average fuel consumption, which was 42.1 miles per gallon by the end of the test ride, meaning a theoretical range of 130 miles from the 14 litre tank. Now, the range could no doubt be improved with sensible riding, but not that dash. Because of the concentration of information, it's not easy to read at a glance. It took several looks to check what riding mode I was in and more to find the gear indicator. Also, it's angled too low, so it pointed at my chin instead of my eyes, and the numbers of the rev counter were partially hidden from view by the lip of plastic at the top. I'm five foot nine, so tall riders will definitely struggle to see them, and the position's not adjustable. It's something that could have been improved with the update, but hasn't. One thing that has been improved, I think, are the colour options, with a new grey-yellow scheme as seen on the MT-10, an Naked R1 that was unveiled in November, and on the MT-09 I rode on the launch. It's called Night Fluo, like some kind of viral infection that strikes after dark. There's also a new Lava Red option, that's basically a darkest red, with the word lava in the name to add drama. Aside from the dash, everything about the MT-09 seems difficult to fault, from the torquey engine to the generous pillion seat. It's an exceptionally capable all-round motorcycle for the price, and if I was in the market to spend around seven grand on a naked bike, it would definitely be this one.